welcome to my channel welcome to my channel yeah welcome to this program uh yeah my name is Oluwatoyi Akumolafe I'm a Nigerian registered nurse also UK registered nurse I'm a public health nurse as well um I like to talk about contemporary issues and I've decided to commence uh, this uh, program on this channel you know as from today and um, apart from this I will be bringing some topical issues relating to earth uh, social social topics you know to this channel so that I'll be able to share my opinions and views and I'll be able to maybe pass my information and um, you know educate some of us who might not be aware of some of those uh, issues prior to the time I'll be discussing them so um yeah so the topic today is an interesting one and I'm sure every one of us is going to you know get one or two things from it and one of the popular musicians you know who just passed uh, recently uh the this boy Ilirio Lua Aloba popularly known as Mubad you know he died and there were so many factors contributing to his death and you know I'm sure the police investigations are still ongoing and uh, one of the issues I want to talk about is this menace of quackery in our society how do we combat this how do we reduce or eliminate quackery within our system i see quackery as a canker worm you know that's as eaten deep into the society has caused a lot of harm you know uh some reversible and irreversible irreversible harm and uh, it's actually a menace and it must be eliminated eradicated in our society and with your support and my support we can do this it's everyone's responsibility we are tired of mourning our loved ones we're tired of you know uh seeing our loved one uh being disabled being harmed due to this problem that is very rampant in society today so before i start uh we first of all talk about what quackery is yeah so uh quackery is refers to dishonest practices and claims to have special knowledge and skills in some fields typically medicine yeah it's common in medicine uh some people are just out there they are trying to you know sell some things to you and they are not what they say they have you know the kind of dishonesty you know they are not being truthful they are telling you that they possess what they do not have they had they said they have the credentials the qualifications that they do not have and you know our health is so important because this life the soul the heart everything that is running through us that was created that created by god there is no duplicate to life you know so we need to guard it jealously and we don't need anyone to toy with it i always tell my people people close to me you know if you must patronize any healthcare setting patronize the approved accredited and the professionals you know ones not the roadside one and not untrained unqualified so yeah they are so dishonest we call it earth fraud it's common in health in health setting and there are so many reasons why these people you know engage in this thing they want to make quick money you know uh, cheap labor also probably due to laziness you know they don't want to go they are trying to call corner or you know so those are the reason why people do all these things and i'm going to you know talk about few few things before i just draw the curtain for today all right so quack means shouting the original meaning of quack is shouting 
shouting like they say that empty barrels makes the loudest noise so it's these people it is these people who are not real who are fake that are actually all over the places all over our faces you know pushing some narratives to us hmm. try to do aggressive promotion of the skills they, they claim they have whereas the skills the knowledge Every, none of this is there. So they would not make a noise. They even, they even charge more exorbitant than some, you know, qualified person in most times. I think I have a counter with some of them. So uh, common element of quackery. What's the common element of quackery? The common element is questionable diagnosis. Have you been to a private hospital before? where you have from qualified uh, people call them famous auxiliary nurses auxiliary nurses they are quacks most of them you know they didn't even go through secondary school some of them are primary school liver some are junior secondary school liver secondary uh, senior secondary school liver and they go to this hospital and some of the acclaimed medical doctors the owner of the hospitals maybe doctors maybe nurses maybe any other people even as these unqualified persons they graduate they go on to establish their own hospital they are very common in lagos and local states i can attest to that and many people patronize them and they always call them doctor doctor whereas they didn't even pass training school so questionable diagnosis most of them they turn their same to nurses they've turned their doctors pharmacy laboratory scientists they do all jack of all trades whereas they didn't go through any formal training to learn all this hmm. and uh, in most cases they usually treat typhoid and malaria they will, okay, go and do malaria tests, wider tests, and we have these kits. There's these kits used for malaria testing. They have, they always have that. They collect their money from patients. Or oh, also they tell you they want to do a wider test. Whereas, wider test has no place in WHO today to diagnose typhoid. The surest way of diagnosing typhoid fever is from your stool. Take your stool sample, send it to lab not through any weather or any other form of weather test they carry out but they still do that today and even if the titer is low they will tell you oh, it's typhoid they must treat typhoid so if you are suffering from cancer and some other uh grievous illnesses but they have been treated for malaria and typhoid in most of the other these uh, mushroom hospitals where these unqualified persons are used and you know there are some terminal illnesses like cancer and some other things that can still be managed if we have been able to you know determine or decide or diagnose it early enough but they be showing these symptoms most of them have similar symptoms like the common illnesses malaria and others so they start treat them even if there is no malaria parasite there's no falciparum or anything in their blood system they still give them anti malaria give them antibiotics do all those things. So questionable diagnosis. Okay. And there are two people. Psych there is a man, a psychiatrist, Stephen Barrett. And another author called Quack Watch. I think the name is from the the kind of study he, or the writing he was involved in. Quack Watch, watching of quacks, you know, studying them. So uh, they define quackery as the promotion of unsubstantiated methods that lack scientifically plausible rationale. Anything involving over promotion in the field of health, including questionable ideas, questionable products and services. Yeah, their products and services are questionable because they are not genuine. They are giving fake. They are giving harmful services they are giving harmful products to their customers or clients as the case may be so we need to be careful we need to be careful so why do people patronize quacks why 
is he accepted? Why is he rampant in the society today? Why is uh, the society not talking about it? Why are people not really talking about it? Why are people? Why do we just accept it? Number one is ignorance. Yeah, many people today they don't even know the difference between registered nurse and a quack. Once they hear nurse, nurse, nurse. Oh, anti nurse. Some people they are very popular in their neighborhood. Anti nurse. Nos, by the time you now find out which school did this person go to, you later find out that this person did not even go through any school of training. You don't undergo any training. So, ignorance. Even some elites are very ignorant. Not only uneducated people, some educated people also patronize them. Yeah. And there is ignorance too on the lack of the provider, the the quacks and the people using them yeah there is ignorance on their own path as well because they don't know the significance and the impact of these on awesome processes on the populace they don't have that knowledge no idea at all and the second one is placebo effects you know Maybe somebody is treating you, the person is not qualified, but because it's nice, greets you, oh ma, good afternoon, welcome. So you overlook whatever is given to you. You are just saying, the, oh, it's very warm, it's caring. So with that, even if your symptom is there, you don't feel it. Psychologically, you are healed because of what it's doing, whereas it's giving you some half footing. So also, we have a uh, Confirmation bias due to your, you know, it's an internet. No, 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 that's not what it says. It's the, the way you see things, the way you interpret things. And leave them because they are suffering. There is no work. They need to do it. If they need to work, there are other areas of job they can do, not the one that can endanger people's life. We justify them. You know? We justify them. There is consp conspiracy theory as well. Some people are into herbal medicine, and because they, they are making a budget, come on, and some other things. So because they want to sell, you know, they try to uh, talk negatively about the conventional products. So they tell them, oh, the side effects are very more. and uh, you know, most time they don't work. They destroy your organ. So if you take this, it's too, so conspiracy theories fear of side effects like i've mentioned costs yeah some hospitals good hospitals are actually expensive they are not cheap so people run away to the substandard one because of the affordability whereas it's causing serious health problems for them pride fraud depression so these are some of the reasons why people accept to quack with. Then who are, what, who are the health professionals that are mostly affected by this quackery? There are people imitating, you know, in the health sector. Nurses, I think, are the most hit. Because they, if you go to any any two kilometers, you see two bedroom hospital, even say a room self contained hospital. You have some people there wearing white or some other colors. They call them their nurses. There were staff nurse to them, nurse imagine. They are being trained by the owner of the hospital to do it and some of them they even carry out what registered nurses do not do you know there are some there are job response job descriptions for each category of health care you know there are some things you do there are something you don't do but they do everything they do the lab work do pharmacy work do everything they do everything dispense administer they do tests they even prescribe most times. They treat people at home, carrying fluid all around, you know, antibiotics all around, give people without even being aware of any risk of anaphylactic reaction following antibiotics or any other medication. So pharmacists, yeah, they said if you look at them mostly, they're the ones selling drugs. Chemist shop, you see them there. Mm, prescribing selling medication they will even sell uh, medication as if they are selling pure water they will, they will put i've seen they call it a when i was in alagbadu then 
some of them will be walking walking at night okay medication they put a uh, tramadol paracetamol the ibuprofen put uh, ampiclos everything together in a nylon they sell it maybe 30 naira then or 20 naira 100 naira sorry they put it together every night they will selling people will be taking it different kind of analgesics in one wrap antibiotics like two. what's that they put surround paracetamol and the, the elongated one the rod the one like rod god and you know overdose of paracetamol affects the liver good people taking antibiotics when they are not needed antibiotic resistance and that's why we have so many cases today by the time antibiotics are used they don't even function they are not effective because they have been overused and the blood system is now resistant so this to it you can see lab scientists they carry out so many things they do tests do pcv do different kind of blood test doctors some of them have their hospital diagnosis treats some even carry out operation on people without passing through in the school you can see now promoters of quackery who are the people promoting quackery Number one, the head professional stem cells, they promote quackery because most of the hospital train them, doctors, some nurses also train them because they are looking for cheap labels. Some farm laboratory scientists, they, they even have hospital as well. I've, no, I've seen some pharmacy to have in hospital diagnosing and treating people, people that are supposed to be carrying out tests, dispensing medications. So everybody is guilty of this. Then the fee makers, yeah, I will talk about that also the post. The fee makers also need to do better. The Nollywood actors, God, they portray this quackery, they sell it to the general public and they make it look acceptable. They make it look normal to the people. I think Nollywood actors, if you want to, you know, maybe act or bring out any movie you need to carry out very grounded research of how hospital settings is made up hospital setting is made up and how all the health professionals interact in the hospital setting don't base your judgment don't base your hospital setting in the movie on what they do in mushroom hospitals where and the doctor will be oh no slack but bring that in for me you know, not like go and do that. So you are promoting such. You are promoting quackery, if you don't know. If you watch an uh, Hollywood, American, UK movie, you see that they carry, if you want to show hospital setting, they do the a standard one. They sell it to the general, but that's even anybody that's never been to the America or never been to the UK, we know that's how hospital settings is. But in Nigeria, it's what people see in the TV. They believe that's how the hospital setting in Nigeria are. That's how nurses are treated. That's how doctors are in the country. I'm going to go to government hospital, teaching hospitals, see how things are done in those hospitals and portray that in your movies. Nollywood. Nollywood. You can do better. You can do better. And uh, it's also very appalling that we have many elites many educator people today among our artists and singers and still patronize quacks why you see that you don't have the money you have the money you don't need to patronize quacks. you don't need to quack. i remember baba sweden too also i remember he died because he was given was given iv fluid in his room by a quack as well he didn't go to hospital why Maybe he will have still be alive if he had been to hospital. Same more bad as well. If he had been in the hospital, maybe he will have still be alive. Why? Can we say it's money you don't have? Is that sheer ignorance? Then government. Government is also a promoter because of lack of fund. No, not funding the hospitals as it's supposed to be. No equipment. If there is money released, there will be equipment. There will be proper training of the staff as well. They need money to train them. Yeah. In a developed world, people 
you know, train yearly, not every year two, or two, two years. There are some training that expire yearly. There are some that expire every two years. Not the one that be in this are uh, Nigeria. You know, people, whatever they call with, that's what they still stay for 10 years. No training, nothing. You need to do better, government. That's why. Then the general public, the tr distrust and the lack of respect for the health professionals make people to patronize quackery. Though some people have never even been to the hospital, but because of what they've heard about, maybe it's due to what they portray about auxiliary, so they will use that to judge everybody, <coughs> even the renaissance. Oh, they are, they are so saucy, they are uncalled, they lack respect, they don't treat people where they don't know anything, they say that narrative. And some may even be justified, oh, the auxiliary, the coax, they even know better, they are very grounded. Why? Why? We need to do better. We need to do better. Let's do away with all those biases. And let's respect our health professionals whenever we see them. They are human beings. You deserve to be respected. And they also deserve to be respected. Both of you deserve to be respected. Then the regulatory bodies, like the regulatory body for the doctor, MDCN, Medical and Data Council of Nigeria, Nancy Amidrifi Council of Nigeria, Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria, Radiographer Council, all of them. You need to wake up and stand up to rescue your products, people that you license, that you register. You need to stand up to your responsibility. There are some laws and policies that are in place that can be used against any hospital or any individual training the, these quacks. But I think people just sit in the office and they are not doing anything. Even juniors, National Association of Indian Nurses and Midwives, NMA, your members are, you know, complicit the most. We need to stand up and let, let us tell ourselves the truth. Life is so precious. We don't need to toy with our lives in the hands of untrained that do not even know what is doing. They may be granted because this is like they, they are apprentices, you know, like tailoring. Yeah, they are they've gone through, they've learned how to use a range, how to do this, you do it, but the rationale behind what they are doing. If you are saying, Oh, I want to give an injection on your tie or your bum or your arm. They sh that's what they were told. But do they have the, they, do they know the rationale why it is being given in all those uh, locations? That's what makes the difference. It's the one thing for you to learn how to do the you know the one you see the technical aspect. But it's wanted to have the knowledge, the grand idea of the rationale behind what you are doing. Giving antibiotics at all. Even hospital setting, we've always been careful because we watch patients, we monitor them for any reaction. And it's very common in Nigeria because most people do not even know if they have any allergy or not. But here in the UK, you know, because they test for allergy and some have taken some medication before and they react to it. So subsequently, such medication will not be administered. But in Nigeria, we don't even know our allergy status. So... And such things should not, anybody cannot just give antibiotics. Antibiotics should not be part of emergency or out of hospital emergency medication that we can give. You can still give paracetamol. Even going high V for somebody that is not even trained to do it. Going through the infection to your bloodstream, through this infection, injury, anything can happen. That should be discouraged and be frowned at. Should be fine out. So, my people, I will draw the curtain here, and I think we've learned one or two things, and I think we will be able to cooperate. We'll be able to take our heads, you know, as precious as God has given it to us. We don't need to put our life in somebody that can that will toy with it and jeopardize it and harm it. Let's be careful. 
let's do away with quackery let's support the necessary organization to fight this menace in our society please um i also advise to people who are untrained who are unqualified and are practicing carrying out what you are not supposed to do can we desist from it can we find other things to do then also if you know you are a school sector that you can still pursue your nursing if you want to be a nurse you can go to school you can still do it thank god you've had the the idea the skill the technical skills some of the technical skills you have it so go there have the idea the knowledge go acquire knowledge you can you can become you can become nurses can become doctors it only takes it takes uh, the zeal and determination don't think you can't do it some people may not have sponsor but that doesn't mean uh you should not jeopardize the life of others because of what you want to gain please and please uh god bless us and i'm sure the next time i'll be coming i have some other interesting topics to share Thank you. Bye.